Now, if you've been paying attention, you'll notice that Ableton magically played back these audio clips in time with one another. Now, how did it do this? Remember, Ableton adjusts the clip tempo to the master tempo through a process called warping. We'll take a closer look at the warp feature in a moment, but first, let's talk about the master tempo. Master tempo is the BPM, or beats per minute, that Ableton plays back at. You can see it located up here in the upper left-hand corner of the Ableton interface. You can set the master tempo in one of three ways. You can click and drag up and down to adjust the numerical BPM in the master tempo. You can double click on it and type in a number. And you can also tap in a rhythm on this tap button and Ableton will calculate the BPM of the rhythm you're performing. Let's do that now. You can see Ableton calculated that to be about 105 BPM. Tap a little faster rhythm. Now why would you want to use this tapping feature? If you're DJing into a live performance such as a band that's playing at a fixed tempo, you can just tap in the rhythm along with the band and Ableton will calculate the BPM. If you're mixing into another DJ who's playing off a of vinyl or another laptop that isn't synchronized to yours, you can again just tap in the rhythm that you're hearing and Ableton will start to play in sync. Or you can just feel the music at a particular tempo and then tap that in and that's the tempo that Ableton will play back all your clips at. Lots of uses for that. And once it's set, again Ableton will adjust all of your clips to this tempo. Alright, so now let's really take a closer look at the warping feature. Down below our main session panel, we have the track and clip view panel. You can switch between the two modes by clicking on these tabs down at the bottom. Let's take a look at our first clip. Click on the waveform overview here. This tab switches us over to the clip view. And you can see this view has several parts. If you look over here on the left, you can see we've got the title of the clip. This is taken from the file name that we loaded in. We've got an assignable color that you can use to refer to any number of things. A display color can be used to visually indicate musical style, uh, perhaps key, uh, maybe intensity level, or the part of the evening you want to play the track at. Below that we've got key signature, and this basically just tells Ableton how to break up the measures uh, that it calculates when it warps. We'll talk about this in just a moment. Moving over to the right, we have the sample pane. Here you can see a little bit of information about the file we loaded in, including sample rate and bit depth. We also see a set of controls for volume and transposition. Now transpose and detune can be used to control the pitch of a track. Let's demo this really quickly. We'll start playback of the clip. Pretty drastic effect. The detune is just a finer tune of this uh, transposition. In the middle of the sample panel, we have the warp controls. You can see warp on off, the BPM that Ableton has calculated for the clip, divided by two and times two multiplier to adjust that calculated BPM. This is useful in styles of music that uh, have more rhythmically complex beats. Um, for example, hip hop, dubstep, drum and bass. Uh, these are styles of music that can use rhythmic patterns that will imply either half or double time. So you may have to correct Ableton in that it may calculate a BPM that's either half or double uh, the way that you're thinking about the music. Below this we have warping mode. Let's take a closer look at this because this is very important to your DJ. Now the best option available in this warp mode is Complex Pro. This is the highest quality time stretching while keeping the key or the pitch of the clip intact. It's also very CPU intensive, so if you get some CPU glitches, um, dropouts in your audio, you may consider using just Complex instead of Complex Pro. Also pretty good sounding but not quite as CPU intensive. Below you can see a number of parameters that Ableton uses for the Complex Pro algorithm. If you're interested in these, go ahead and take a look at the manual. There's a really good detailed explanation. The one other mode we're going to concern ourselves with here is repitch. 
Now this is also an excellent quality tempo adjustment, but changes the pitch of the track, uh, much like a turntable's pitch slider would. Remember that uh, Complex Pro and Complex both keep the pitch of the track intact. The repitch will change it. So for the most part, we'll be using Complex Pro. Let's go ahead and switch that back. Now looking over here at the clip view, we have a horizontal display. You can see a waveform overview here. And then along the top, we have a number of rulers. These numbers along the top are measure markers within that clip. Measures are the musical units of time that Live uses to count playback. Now these are measures within the song itself. Note that Live's overall transport, the measure markers notated up here, doesn't need to match the measure markers in the song. This is just the measure marker location within the clip. Below that, we have several rows for different markers, which we'll talk about in just a moment. But first, let's take a closer look at this waveform display. Now, what's a waveform? A waveform is a visual representation of the amplitude or volume of a sound file over time. Now this is a graph of the physical motion of the speaker as the sound file plays back, in fact. Now let's go ahead and zoom in on the waveform. You can do this in three ways. You can either use the plus or minus keys on your keyboard. Also, you can move the mouse up here over the measure ruler click and drag up or down. You can also move from left to right. And then finally, you can also place the mouse over the waveform overview down below. And again, dragging up and down, zooms in or out. And left or right will find a position within that waveform. Now you see how we zoom in on the waveform. We see smaller gradations in the measure ruler across the top. As we zoom in, we see Ableton dividing these measures into beats beat 1, beat 2, beat 3, beat 4. Now, you remember the time signature over here? 4-4 four, four means that there are 4 beats per measure. Now within the waveform, we see certain identifiable musical events. We call these transients. This usually indicates a spot where a drum hit is. Kick drums in particular are pretty easy to spot. So let's pick a visually identifiable spot. Here around measure 73, we can see we're coming out of a break. Here's a kick drum. Looks like the beat's lining up very closely with the grid. You can see the warp marker that Live has placed before that transient. We'll double click on that beat marker and turn it into a warp marker. Now that locks it to our measure grid. Let's go ahead and find another spot later in the track. Here at measure 177, we have the same thing, coming out of a breakdown. Again, very close. Live has done a really good job of warping this track, but just to be sure, we'll go ahead and lock these markers down. Double click on the beat marker, turn it into a warp marker. Now just as an example, if this were off, say the kick drum was falling before this measure marker, we could click on this and drag it and Live would stretch the area in between that and the previous beat marker to adjust the duration so that that transient fell where we stretched the beat marker to. We'll find another spot in between and zoom in to make sure that the adjustment we made didn't throw everything else off. Looks pretty good there. And then let's audition a spot later in the track just to make sure it's still lining up with the grid here. And we can drop in anywhere in this waveform to play back by hovering over this ruler lane here where some more markers are. You'll see that the mouse turns into a speaker. Clicking on that starts playback at that point in the clip. Now what I'm looking at is Live's transport. Watch the measure count there, measures, beats, Counting along with the music, you can see that it's still very closely lined up. So we've done a good job of helping Live warp this. Now let's take a look at our second track. Now you can see there's a long intro before the beat comes in. By default, Ableton starts playing the track at the very beginning. Let's say we want it to start somewhere else, like where the kick drum comes in on this track. Well. 
there's a newer feature in Ableton that helps us warp tracks like these. First, we'll zoom in on the transient where the beat begins. Double click to create a beat marker. And then control click and say set 111 here. Which means start creating the measure grid from that beat. Then, we'll control click again and say warp from here. And that tells Ableton to start the warping from that point. The warping works better when it's got a clear set of transients to work with. Again, just to be sure, we'll skip forward in the track a bit. Find a nice clear point. And double check the warping. Zoom in here on 65. You can see it's pretty close. Skip forward a bit again. I'm just picking arbitrary points intervals throughout the song. Again, pretty close. Looks like it's drifted just a hair. So we'll go ahead and tidy that up. 